Football Grounds, the home of the New York Giants for nine months of the year, starting in April with the Baseball Giants and ending in December with the Football Giants. The NFL Championship game was conceived in 1933 when these two teams met in the inaugural contest in Chicago with the Bears winning 23-21. to The winner's share was $210.34 and each loser received $140.22. The winners today will take home almost $2,000 while the losers are expected to get about $1,300. This will be the fourth time that the Bears and Giants have met for the title. And this is the Giants' seventh time in 14 years to appear in the championship game while the Bears are competing in their eighth title clash. So both teams are very familiar with the setting. In fact, in all but two of the 14 championship games, at least one of these two teams has been a participant. It goes without argument that the families of George Hallis and Tim Mara have been quite dominant in the National Football League. There are better than 58,000 fans here today creating a new record for a playoff game, significantly surpassing the former record of just over 48,000 that saw the giant Packer game here in 1938. The Bears won out in the five-team Western Division by two games over the L.A. Rams, doing well, by the way, in their first year out of Cleveland. Early in the season, the Giants had beaten the Bears 14 to nothing, but the Bears have gained considerable strength since then. A week ago, the Giants enhanced their prestige with a 31 to nothing shellacking of the Washington Redskins, which gave them the Eastern Championship. Philadelphia and Washington were close behind the Giants in their five-team division. In their three previous championship confrontations, the Bears have won twice, and they are favored today also. Immediately after last Sunday's games, the odds seemed to favor the Bears by a slight margin. On Thursday, the day when the big bookmakers post the first odds for the pro games, the books quoted the Bears by seven points. The rush of Chicago money made it seven and a half points, and as bear money continued to pour in, it rose to ten points. In some establishments yesterday morning, the quotation had jumped to 14 points. The heavy margin by which the Bears became favored aroused suspicion of a possible fix. And the way the odds were vacillating, the culprits were expected to be in the Giants' camp. The New York Crime Squad immediately went to work. After a hurried initial investigation that turned up the name of Alvin Paris as the gambler involved, a meeting was called in the mayor's office late Saturday afternoon. At the meeting with the mayor and the police involved were NFL Commissioner Burt Bell, Tim Mara, founder of the Giants football dynasty, and his sons Wellington and Jack, who is president of the club. Also present was John J. Bennett, Giants chief counsel. It soon became obvious that two of the Giants players were under suspicion. Both were starters in the backfield, quarterback Frank Vilchuk and fullback Merle Hapes. The mayor, visibly upset, took complete charge. After dinner, the conferees returned to City Hall, then adjourned to Gracie Mansion. Filchok, who was in the city to take part in a radio broadcast Saturday night at which he was to have received a Most Valuable Player Award, was summoned to the mansion. Hapes was brought down from the Bear Mountain camp of the Giants. The mayor talked with Filchok, 190-pound star from Indiana who was 29 years old and in his first year with the Giants, like a father to a son, according to a first-hand description of the scene. He talked separately with Hapes, neither player knowing at the time about the presence of the other in the house. Hapes is in his second year with the Giants and he formerly played at the University of Mississippi. Both players were in tears as they admitted having been offered the bribes. The mayor was said to have been impressed with their statements that they had entered into no agreement not to do their best. They admitted their mistake in failing to report the offers. It is believed both players were offered in the neighborhood of $3,500 apiece to see that the Bears bettered the spread. Commissioner Bell has just announced that Hapes will not be permitted to play this afternoon pending an investigation by the authorities. However, he is going to allow Phil Chalk to play. Paris's punishment, should he be convicted of attempted bribery, is a felony punishable by one to five years imprisonment or a fine not exceeding $10,000. The Giants' other players did not learn of the bribe attempts until they were informed dramatically at breakfast this morning. They approached this title game also minus the services of Bill Paschal, their best ground-getting fullback. With Paschal in the hospital as a result of a broken jaw received in the Redskin game last week. Habes, who had contested the starting berth with Paschal for fullback, was slated to be their best bet on the ground this afternoon. For the moment, let's just forget the scandal. They've still got a game to play out here this afternoon, and we are nearing the opening kickoff. Here are the probable starting lineups. For the visiting Chicago Bears at left end, Ed Sprinkle from Hardin-Simmons. The left tackle is Fred Davis of Temple. At left guard, Chuck Drulis out of the University of Washington. At center, Bulldog Turner from Hardin-Simmons. 
The right guard is Ray Bray of Western Michigan, and right tackle Mike Jarmaluck out of Temple, and the right end is George Wilson, the 11-year veteran from Northwestern. So both Harden, Simmons, and Temple produced two starters in the bare line. Veteran All-Pro Sid Luckman is a quarterback. He comes from Columbia. The left halfback is Dante McNaughty from St. Mary's. And right halfback will be Hugh Gallino. He's out of the dream 1940 backfield at Stanford. And the fullback is Bill Osmanski out of Holy Cross. And the Giants are expected to start at left end Jim Poole from Mississippi. Left tackle DeWitt Coulter. He's a dropout from West Point. At left guard, Bob Doblestein of Tennessee. At center, Chet Gladchuck of Boston College. The right guard will be Lynn Younce of Oregon State. At right tackle, Jim White from Notre Dame. And the right end is Jim Lee Howell out of Arkansas. In the backfield, at quarterback, Frank Filchuk from Indiana. The left halfback, George Frank of Minnesota. The right halfback, Steve Filippowitz of Fordham. And the fullback will be Frank Reagan. Out of the University of Pennsylvania and a very able backup for both Paschal and Hapes, I might add. Bears won the toss and the Giants will kick off. Ken Strong boots the ball downfield and it goes out of bounds. He'll have to kick again, this time from his own 35-yard line. Here comes Strong, boots the ball, hits a long downfield. Taken in by Bill Osmanski at the 12-yard line. He's the 15, the 20. The 25, the 30, and up to the 35-yard line. First and 10. Gallano in motion. Ball given off to Osmanski, and Jim White pulls him down at the 27-yard line, a loss of 8 yards. On second and 18, left hand back in motion. Pitch back to Osmanski. He carries up over the 30 and gets up to the 33-yard line, a game of 6. It'll be third and 12 from the bare 33-yard line for Chicago. Man in motion to the right. Luckman took too much time. It's a five-yard penalty against the Bears, and the ball will be set back to their, let's see, from the 33 back to the 28-yard line. It'll be third and 17. Luckman drops back to pass, throws downfield for Sprinkle, through behind him. Couldn't reach back and catch the ball, and it'll be fourth down. Luckman in front formation, boots the ball. The ball hits down at the 37-yard line, and it goes out of bounds at the 24-yard line. First down for the Giants. Singling back to the left. Frank in motion. Phil Chalk goes back to pass. Looks downfield. Throws out to the right side at the 50-yard line over the head of Jim Lee Howell. He's six foot six, but not tall enough to get that one. Frank in motion again. Takes a handoff from Phil Chalk. Goes around the right side. Gets up to the 34-yard line. Fumbles the ball. And it is going to be recovered by the Bears. It's recovered in there by Stuart Clarkson, the Bears center. So the Bears have the ball at the 32-yard line in Giant territory. Luckman gives off to McAfee and down right half back, and George gets no gain. It's still at the 32-yard line on second and 10. Luckman takes the snap, throws downfield for Sprinkle. He's got it at the 24, and he's down at the 23-yard line, a gain of nine. It'll be third down and one yard to go. Ball given off this time to McAfee on a reverse play, and he gets down to the 21-yard line again, too. It's first down for the Bears at the 21-yard line, Giant territory. Luckman back to pass. He's looking downfield, throws down the middle, and between the goal posts, Kenny Cavanaugh makes the catch. It's a Bear touchdown. 6-0, Frank Masnicki boots the extra point, and 7-0 Bears with four and a half minutes gone in the first quarter. Masnicki will kick off for the Bears. He boots the ball at the 40-yard line. Hits it over to the left side of the field. Down the far sidelines. Phil Chalk goes back to get it at the 11. He's back to the 15. He gets up to the 20. Tight ropes his way up to the 24 and out of bounds. On first down, single way back to the left. George Frank in motion. Frank Phil Chalk hands off to Frank Reagan. We've got enough Franks in the giant backfield to buy a ticket on the 50-yard line. Reagan is harassed by and corralled by Fred Davis, so also two. Frank in motion again. They're going to wear him out. Phil Chalk goes back to pass, goes off to the right sidelines, and throws the ball out of bounds. Aimed at Jim Poole, but he threw it away because George Wilson was about ready to tackle him. On third 12 from the 22, Reagan in short confirmation boots the ball. McAfee not fooled at all, gets the ball at the 37 in Bear territory, gets up to the 40, goes out to the left side. Tries to get around, but cannot do so, and Jim Lee Howell gets him at the 40-yard line, where it'll be the Bears ball in their own territory, first and 10. McNally in motion, Luckman pitches back to McAfee. Jim Poole almost got him in the backfield for a loss, but he manages to scramble up to the 41-yard line. 
We're really second and nine. Lockman takes the snap out of the T formation, face to pass, throws down the middle, and it was over the head of Magnani, who was open at the giant 45. Lockman on third down, fakes the pitch out, goes back to pass, and Lynn Younce nails him at the 30 and gets him down at the 26 yard line, a loss at 15. Bears will have to punt on fourth and long. Lockman kicks it out of there, kicks it down to the 38 yard line, bounces over the 35, down over the 30, and dead on the 27 yard line upon a 47 yards. On first down and 10 for the Giants from their own 27 this time. Flanker is right, and it's Frank, and he gets a handoff from Phil Chalk and gets nailed by Jim Keane for a loss of 3 at the 24. On second and 13, Phil Chalk goes back to pass, and he's throwing out to the right side to Frank Lytle at the 45. It's incomplete. It'll be third down and 13 yards to go from the 24 for the Giants. 7 nothing Bears, back to pass goes Phil Chalk. Sprinkle comes in, almost takes his head off, throws the ball down the middle. Magnani intercepts at the 37, down he's at the 30, the 25, the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5, and it's Bears 13 to nothing. The Bears have scored again here in the first quarter. Masnicki kicks the extra point, it's good, it's 14 nothing, with 6 minutes and 8 seconds to go in the first quarter of play. Masnicki kicks off for the Bears. And there's a long kick downfield. George Frank catches it on the full run at the 20, and he comes up to the 31 where he's down at that point. First and 10 for the Giants trailing now, 14 to nothing. Man motion, Phil Chop strings up and goes down the middle of Jim Poole at the 37, and he's down at the 41 by Air Captain Rudy Mucha. 10 yard gain. First and 10 for the 41. Stack goes back to Phil Chop who goes up the middle. He's driven down by Bulldog Turner at the 43. I'm not sure he knew it hit him. There's a roughing penalty against the Bears. They march the ball down to the 44. First and 10 for the Giants. Frank Reagan takes the ball off the right side to the 45 to 40. Pat Preston pulls at it. Mike Drumlin charms it loose. Picked up by Hugh Gallardo. He's back to the 25. He comes back to the 30. And he gets up to the 35 yard line. And on a giant bubble, the Bears have the ball on their own 35 yard line. T formation, Gallardo in motion. Lockman takes the ball and gives it off to McAfee on a scissors play, and he gets up to the 38, a gain of three. Gallano is in motion again. Luckman fades to pass. He throws out the right side to Sprinkle. He's jarred loose with the ball by Lytle, who picks it up and runs downfield, but to no avail as the ball is ruled incomplete. The Bears are going to be penalized back to their 23 for holding. So it'll be now, let's see, second down and 22 yards to go from the Bear 23-yard line for the Chicago Bears. Luckman fades to pass. Looks downfield and throws long downfield for McNaughty and the field shot almost intercepted it. It falls incomplete. It'll be third and 22 from the 23. Luckman again back to pass. Throws a flat pass out to McAfee and he negotiates his way upfield and down by Steve Lovitz at the 25. So it'll be fourth down and 20 from the 25 and Luckman has to boot it out of there. Not a particularly good punt. Hits on the 47 in Giant Territory, rolls laterally and dies at the 48, 27-yard punt for Luckman. Giants take over on their own 48, and there is in the, to the middle of the line, George Frank gains two yards, and then Phil Chuck passes to Jim Poole, who reached up and caught it at the 41 and was down at the 38 for a gain of 12. Phil Chuck again back to pass, and he throws out to the left side to Lionel. McAfee and the ball arrive simultaneously, and it's ruled incomplete. Reagan picked it up and went into the end zone to no avail. The next play saw the Giants score on a 38-yard pass play from Phil Chalk to Libel, who caught it at the 2 and roared into the end zone to make it 14-6. Ken Strong's point after is good as 14-7 with a minute and a half left in the first quarter of play. Strong kicks off. Long downfield to the 2-yard line to McAfee. He's got 5 minutes in front of him. He comes up over the 20, the 25, and down at the 26-yard line. On first and 10 for the 26, Luckman gives to Joe Osmanski now in at fullback, and DeWitt Colbert pulled him down at the 27, a gain of one. There's a give to McLean. Scooter McLean goes to the 31, a gain of four. On third and five, the gun goes off, and at the end of the first quarter, the Bears lead 14 to seven. The second quarter begins with the Bears in possession at the 31. Magnetic in motion. Luckman straightens up, fires the ball to Jim Keene who catches it, and he has horse collar down by Hank Sore at the 39, a gain of eight in the first down. On first and ten, Luckman goes back to pass, 
He throws to the near sidelines and it goes in front of King. Incomplete. Howie Livingston defending on second down. Luckman's pass is batted down at the line of scrimmage on third and ten from the 39. Bang that in motion and Luckman moving in the pocket. Throws and it goes in and out of the hands of Jim Poole who almost intercepted the ball. So it'll be fourth and ten at the 39 and Luckman punts. The ball hits down at the 27 and Phil Chalk picks it up at the 23. He goes left with the ball while Stickle misses him, but Bulldog Turner has him and nails him at the 20 yard line upon a 30 yards for Luckman. On first down, Phil Chalk gives to Frank Stu Cox and submarines the interference to the Steve Lipwitz line. George Wilson to make the tackle at the 23. On second down, Phil Chalk hands to Reagan and nobody blocked Fred Davis who puts him down for a two yard loss at the 21. Third and nine, short punt formation. Phil Chuck gets the ball and fades back to pass, going back to his 7-yard line, throws down the field for Jim Poole. He's got it with the 26, down in his tracks, a gain of 5, and that brings up a 4th and 4. They'll punt. Reagan's punt is off the side of his foot and out of bounds around the 40-yard line. He was run into by Walter Stickle, and the Bears will be penalized 15 yards for running into the kicker. They argue about it, but the referee marks it off anyway, so it's first down. Phil Chalk's first down pass is batted down by Chuck Drulis, aimed at Jim Poole. On second and ten, snap goes back to Reagan. This time he hands off to Phil Chalk, who'll run off the left side, and he gets all the way up to the 48-yard line again, seven. So on third and three, Phil Chalk in the pocket to pass. Throws flat-footed downfield for George Frank, 35 yards downfield. It's intercepted by Dante McNally at the 28. He heads for the far sidelines. He reverses his field and comes toward the near sidelines. He's over the 35 and he is down at the 37 yard line. On the left side of your screen you can see Ray Bray elbow Frank Reagan in the head. Frank was carried off the field with a smashed nose and possible concussion. Another key loss in the already depleted giant backfield. On first and ten the Bears were penalized back five yards to their 32. Gallano got a huge hole off the right side and Dave Brown hitting down at the 38 yard line. A gain of six. It'll be second and nine for the Bears at their own 38 yard line. Luckman gives to Gallano for a third straight time and he powers for seven yards to the 45, but the Bears are penalized for holding back to their 25 yard line. So it'll be second and 22 at the 25. Luckman hands off to Don Perkins who has a nice hole over the 30 south of the 33 yard line. A gain of eight. So it'll be third and 14 from the 33. Perkins in motion. Luckman goes back to pass and he throws long downfield and it is caught by Ken Cavanaugh. Beautiful catch. He's down at the giant 25 again of 42 yards. Hank Sore stands over him. On first and 10 from the 25, Perkins is stopped for no gain. It'll be second down and 10 from the 25. Luckman hands off to McAfee who comes left and he's going to stop and throw the ball towards the end zone and it goes off the shoulder pads of Cavanaugh. It might have been deflected by Axor, but anyway, it was incomplete. On third and ten, Luckman back to pass. He throws out to the right side. He's got a couple of men down there and overthrows everybody. So it'll be fourth down, and Masnicki will try a 33-yard field goal. It is downfield, but not far enough, and taken in by Phil Chalk at the six. He is at the 10, the 15, the 20, the 25, the 30, and he's down at the 32. First down for the Giants at that point. On first down, Phil Chalk. Fades back to pass, gets good protection, and he throws downfield for libel, and McAfee cuts in front of him, intercepts at the 47, gets leveled at the 50, gets back up, and gets pushed out of bounds at the 45. Third interception of the day for Chicago. On first down, Joel Osmaski gets a yard to the 44. Second and nine from the 44. Turner snaps to Luckman, who fades to pass, throws out to the right side, and it goes off the hands of Jim King. Incomplete. Bears leading 14-7, six minutes to go till halftime. On third and nine, Luckman retreats to pass, and he throws over the head of the intended receiver. So it'll be fourth down, and Luckman will be forced to punt. He does so. It's taken on the run by Phil Chuck at the 19, and Walter Lamb, Joe Osmanski, and Walt Stickle hit him at that point. On first and ten, ball snapped back to Phil Chuck, and he drives up to the 26-yard line again of seven. It'll be second and three. Phil Chuck off the right side again, this time to the 28. It'll be third and one at the 28, trailing 14 to seven. George Frank gets a direct snap from Gladchuck and goes up the middle to the 29. They measure and it's a first down. On first and 10, Phil Chuck takes a snap and in on him is George Wilson before he can even get moving. A seven yard loss back at the 22. On second and 17, Phil Chuck hands off to Frank and Frank comes outside towards the near sidelines, gets hemmed in, gets away, gets to the 30. 
to the 35, away from another man, the 40, the 45, the 50, the 45, and down at the 42-yard line, down by Gallon and McAfee after a brilliant run of 36 yards. You saw Jim White level Gallon and the Giants are going to be penalized 15 yards for that infraction. More importantly, George Frank is hurt, and it would appear that it's his shoulder. It may be separated. Phil Chuck joined in the backfield now by Filipowicz, Gargone, and Livingston. Not exactly what Coach Steve Owen had in mind going into this title game. Filipowicz gained three to the 47, and Phil Chuck threw out to Gargone, and he is down at the 45, a loss of two. And on third and nine from the 45, Phil Chuck goes back to pass. Throws to Poole at the 48 in their territory, and he gets down to the bare 43. Brought down by Drulis, a gain of 12. On first and 10 with 43, Phil Chuck throwing for Livingston over his head and intercepted by McAfee at the 21, and he comes back to the 27 yard line. Hit down by Poole. Interception number four for the Bears today. The Giants were offside, and so it's first and five. A minute left in the half. A flat pass goes out to McAfee. He's got it to 35. He's in the 40, the 45, the 50, the 45, the 40. Cuts inside at the 35. And is dragged down by Hank Soar at the 31-yard line. A run of 37 yards. Another great play today. On first and 10, 30 seconds left in the half. Luckman going back to pass. Plenty of time. Throws downfield for Cavanaugh near the goal line. Intercepted by Livingston. And Soar was there too. So it'll be first down for the Giants at their two. Phil Chock sneaks, the clock winds down, there's one second left, and the gun goes off, and the players on both sides walk slowly toward the dressing room. Very much deserving the rest after a hard play first half with the Bears leading 14 to 7. The Giants begin the second half knowing that their four best runners, Paschal, Hapes, Reagan, and Frank, are all unavailable to Coach Owen. And Coach Hallis's monsters of the midway lead at half 14 to 7. Strong kicks off for the Giants to begin the second half, and it's brought back to the 28-yard line. On first down and 10 from the 28, Oz Mansky is given the ball, and he loses the yard of the 27. Tex Calder brings him down. Second and 11 from the 27. And the ball is handed off to Hugh Gallano, and he gets up to the 29-yard line, a gain of two. On third and nine from the 29, you expect to pass. Luckman instead hands off to Bill Osmanski. He gets a momentary hole hit by DiFilippo. Hit again by Livingston. Fumbles. Fall along by Jim Lee Howell. He rolls over. Gets up. Starts downfield. Hit down by Wilson and others at the 27-yard line. A big break for the underdogs. Trailing 14-7 on first and 10 from the 27. Field shot gives to Livingston, who is cut down by Sprinkle at the 25. Crawls forward to the 22. The Bears will be penalized half the distance to the goal line for unnecessary roughness as Livingston was roughed up in the pileup. Field shot carries from the 11 down to the 10. It'll be second down and nine yards to go. Field shot again plunges off the right side to the five yard line. On third down, Field shot threw to Steve Filippowitz for a touchdown. And Strong's extra point was good to tie it up at 14. Although he has been intercepted four times, Phil Chalk is playing a flat-out Hall of Fame game. Nobody doubts his courage and effort today, least of all the Bears. Strong's kickoff with just under four minutes gone, and the third quarter has taken two yards deep in the end zone and run back out to the 24-yard line. It'll be first and ten from the 24 for the Bears. Got on no motion. Joe and Bill Osmaski are behind Luckman. There's a give to Bill, and he drives forward to the 30, a gain of six. Luckman hands off to Gallano and gets up to the 33, a gain of three. It'll be third and one from the 33, and Luckman can't find anybody to hand off to, so he carries it himself and barely gets the first down at the 34. White and Gorgo will make the tackle. On first and 10 from the 34, handoff goes to Bill Osmanski, who drives up the middle, stopped after a short game. Holding is called against the Bears. Sets the ball back to their 25-yard line. The Bears are shooting themselves in the foot here in the third quarter. The Bears' Lugman handing off to Osmanski. Joe Osmanski this time delay. Runs over the 30, the 35, and he is down at the 37 again at 12. On third down, Lugman goes back to throw the ball. He throws out to the side. A short pass to McAfee. A shoestring catch at the 42. Short of the first down. And it'll be fourth down and two yards to go for the Bears from their own 42-yard line. Luckman in front formation, spirals it out of there, hits it down to the seven-yard line where Phil Chalk has it, comes back to the 12-yard line. A point of 51 yards for Sid Luckman, score tied 14-14 in the third quarter. It'll be first and 10 for the Giants from their own 12, deep in their own territory. Phil Chalk gives to Livingston, and he bobs and weaves his way over the 15, met by McAfee at the 19, a gain of seven. 
On second and three, Phil Chow calling signals. This time gets the ball, face to Livingston, gives up to Flipowitz and she plunges over the 20, stops over the 22 by Drillis. And others, still shot, drives up the middle and gets his first down just over the 22. On first down from the 22, Phil Chalk again, the same play, same result. Got about a yard. It'll be second down, nine yards to go up to 23. And this time, Phil Chalk gives to Filipowicz. He gets another yard. It'll be third and eight from the 24. The ball is snapped back to Phil Chalk. He gives off to Livingston. And the line play is vicious on both sides. No gain on fourth down. The three best giant punters are out of the game, those being Hates, Reagan, and Frank. And that leaves it up to Livingston. He'll punt the ball downfield. And it hits on the bear. 37 goes out of bounds of the 35. A punt of 41 yards. A nice punt for Howie. They put the ball on 34. Lovman hands off to Joe Osmanski. The younger of the two Osmanskis, both having graduated from Holy Cross. Joe was 27, Bill 29. Joe met by an entourage of giant players at the 35. Gain of one, so it's second down and nine. Lockman throws, McLean's in the open downfield at the 40-yard line, giant territory, overthrown. On third and nine, back to pass again goes Lockman. Jack Neve, the defensive end, taken out by McAfee, and here's the throw to the sideline to Jim Keating over his head. Keating, the 215-pounder from University of Iowa. Lockman on fourth down, punks the ball, and guess who's going to be underneath it at the 27-yard line? Frank Filchow. Walter Lamb plants him in his place, in his tracks, Right down at that point, a punt of 38 yards. New York has assessed a clipping penalty half the distance of the goal back to the 13-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 from their own 13. Phil Chalk hands off to Livingston. The former Fullerton J.C. halfback runs for nine yards, pushed out of bounds by McLean at the 22. On second and one from the 22. Filippowitz up the middle, gets two hard yards down by Clarkson and Wilson at the 24, but it's first down. At the 24, Filippowicz gets the handoff, goes left. Mike Jomalock is the first one to hit him down. And he's down at the 25 on second and nine from the 25. Ball snapped to the short man, Phil Chalk, and he gives to Filippowicz again. And George Wilson helps pull him down at the 27. It's third and seven from the 27. Phil Chalk will pass. Three minutes left in the third quarter. Chased out of the pocket by Jomalock, throws left in the open. Filippowicz at the 40, at the 45, the 50, the 45, the 40. The 36 yard line pushed out of bounds by McAfee. A gain of 37 yards. The Giants threaten to go ahead. Phil Chalk up the middle for two, but the Giants are going to be penalized for holding. And the way Jim White is talking to one of the officials on the way back, it may have been him committing the infraction. First and 22 from the 48. Here comes Livingston to the right. He fakes a pass. He turns up field and Clarkson nails him at the 45. So it'll be second down and 19 at the 45. Phil Chalk. Back to pass, and he throws out to the left side. Libel being guarded by Gallo, but he could have caught it. It was off his fingertips. A beautiful pass by Phil Chalk. So it's third and 19 from the 45. Phil Chalk retreats to his own 45. Throws toward Livingston at the bare 40. He is jarred loose of the ball by Chuck Drillis, 215 pounder from Temple. Incomplete. On fourth down, Livingston still probably feeling the effects of the hit. Punts off the side of his foot, and it goes out of bounds to the Bear 31, a punt of only 14 yards. There are 15 seconds left in the quarter. The play of the Giants, and in particular Frank Filchok, is amazing this afternoon. They were significant underdogs to start the game, and now they play without their four top runners and with a quarterback under suspicion who probably hasn't slept since Friday. Under all this pressure, Filchok still has his team in position to win. McLean went three yards on first down, and the gun sounded, sending us to the fourth quarter with a score tied at 14. On the first play of the final period, Lugman has three men behind him in the Shaughnessy team, gets the left halfback Ray McLean, cut down by Lou Filippo for no gain. On third and seven, no more textbook team, George McAfee flanked out to the right, Luckman throws, and McAfee has it at the 42, the 45, he's at the 50, and he is pushed out of bounds by Steve Filippowitz at the giant 48, a gain of 18, and a first down. Walter Stickle jumps offside, the right tackle of the Bears, and the Bears will be penalized back to their 47-yard line. It'll be first and 15 from that point. Again, a straight T, Giants at a 6 one McAfee gets away from two men, but DeWitt takes Colder, plants him down for a yard loss. The Bears have not executed well from that formation. It's second and 16 from the 46. Luckman fades to pass. Good protection, and he throws downfield for Keene. He makes a sensational catch with Giants on every side of him with the 42, a gain of 12. Look at the bottom of your screen with the giant defender pointing at Kavanaugh, who must have done something wrong on the play. Meanwhile, 34 from the 42, and Osmanski comes around the right side, gets down to the 34-yard line, hit down by Dave Brown, it's first down. Lutman retreats to pass. He is looking, he is throwing long downfield, and he overthrows McLean and defender Dave Brown. A 15-yard penalty for unnecessary roughness called against the Giants, and Hank Soares protesting. 
Jim Poole was injured on the play, replaced by Don McCafferty. Lockman fakes to McAfee, cuts inside of McCafferty, he's gonna run the ball! He's at 15, he's at the 10, bowls his way down to the 5 and into the end zone! It's a touchdown for the Bears! First time today, I believe he's run the ball, and he goes 19 yards for a touchdown. Man, Stinky's extra point is good, and 235 goal in the fourth quarter is 21-14. George House the Bears are by numbers wearing down their depleted opponents and the Giants are going to have to gut it out. Let's see if they can. Maznicki's kickoff is taken by an out man and if you can figure out who has the ball you get the brass ring. Whoever got it brought it back to the 33 yard line first and 10 for the Giants in their own territory. Phil Chop gets the snap, goes back to pass, throws down the middle of Jack Doolin, a late replacement and he drops the ball, kicks it the dirt. Maybe he should take up punting. The Giants are in need. On second and 10, Phil Chop gives to Doolin on a wing back reverse and he is down at the 37-yard line, a gain of four. On third and six, Phil Chuck gets the snap, fades to pass. He throws out to the left. It's intercepted by Bulldog Turner right in his hands. He's down to the 35, cuts inside, eludes Coulter, gets down to the 25 and over the 25 and the 23, down by Chuck Gladchuck. Frank's fifth interception of the day. The Bears trying to go for it, maybe all on first down. Yes, Lutman throws long downfield, and he reciprocates right in the hands of a giant. Howie Livingston got it at the three, brings it back to the 13, where he's brought down by Walter Stickle. So it's first down for the Giants on their own 13-yard line, trailing 21 to 14. Filchok up the middle, goes two to the 15. It's second and eight at the 15. Filchok face to pass. And he throws long down the middle, and it is to Jack Meade, and it's off his hands at the 40. Well defended by the Eminem boys, McLean and McAfee. Gilchock is back, and he is flushed out of the pocket on third and eight. He's coming to the left side, and he throws to Doolin at the 20. Doolin gets to the 25, and he's pushed out of bounds at the 26. Got 11 yards on a first down. First and 10 from the 26, and Phil Chalk again going back to pass, throws a screen pass, falls incomplete. Phil Chalk throwing on almost every down now, and he is bulldog down by Ed Sprinkle. Almost took his head off a loss of 11 on third and 21. The Giants elect to punt. Lynn Yance will do the honors this time, puts the ball up in the air, and it is taken in by McAfee at the 45. He's down to the 40. He is out of bounds at the 37, walked out of bounds all on his own, wasn't pushed out. Half the quarter is gone, and the Bears have the ball with a seven point lead. Down and roll back in the game. Crashes off the left side for seven. DiFilippo shoestrings him down. On second down, Joe Osmanski up the middle for one. DiFilippo again on the tackle. On third and two from the 29, McLean, Osmanski, and Gallo behind Luckman. Sid handed off to Osmanski, and Joe drove down for a first down to the 26. McCafferty eluded Gallo's block to make the tackle. On first and 10 from the 26, McLean gets a yard, stopped by Younce. It's second and nine from the 25, and Gallo up the middle, and Younce rides him down. The Giants are digging in. It's third and eight from the 24. Luckman hands off on a delay to Osmanski. He gets a hold. DeFilippo fights off a block, and submarines show at the 19. Frank Masnicki will try a 26-yard field goal on fourth and three. The snap back is to Luckman, the kick is in the air, and the kick is good! And the Bears are leading 24-14 with 5.16 left in the game. Masnicki's long kickoff downfield is taken over the shoulder by Phil Chop at the 10. And he zigzags his way up to the 20, up over the 20, and to the 22-yard line. It's put up or shut up time now for the Giants, and first and 10 for the 22. Phil Chop takes the ball, gets to the 25, will lose a couple of minutes at 30. 35, 40, drags men up to the 42-yard line. What in the world is keeping that guy going today? On first and 10, Phil Chuck calls on Flipowitz, who goes off the left side to the 45, a gain of three. It's second and seven. And the snap goes back to Phil Chuck. He's rolling right. He's being chased by Fred Davis. And he throws long downfield into Jack Bean, intercepted by Luckman, who leaped up to make the interception. And he muscles his way back up to the 34-yard line. That's Phil Chalk's sixth interception of the day, and with three minutes left, there are some fans beginning to file out, but what a battle the Giants put up today against really insurmountable odds. And for those of you that question Phil Chalk's play, and in particular, his six interceptions today, just ask yourself one simple question. What would the score have been had Phil Chalk not played? Bill Osmanski carried three straight times to the 46 for a first down. His first and 10 from the 46, a little bit better than a minute to go. A fumble by Osmanski. He gets up to the 48-yard line after picking it up. It'll be second and eight from the 48 for the Bears, and they don't really care. They're just running the clock out. McAfee goes for a yard in the 49 on third and seven. With less than a minute to go, Osmanski up the middle. He gains a yard to midfield. And it'll now be fourth and six, only second left, final play of the game. And Lutman keeps the ball, and he is hit for no gain. And you see the gun go off. There's no celebration, too tired to celebrate. And so is a classic NFL title game with the Bears winning 24 to 14.